Okay, let's take a look at number one. The hypotenuse of a right triangle measures 11 and one leg measures eight. What is the length of the other leg? What should we do first? Draw it out. Draw it out. So we have the hypotenuse is 11 and one leg is eight. What can we say that the other leg is? X. X. So Allie, what equation are we gonna um, use? 64 plus X squared equals 121. Perfect. Awesome. Good job. Let's take a look at number two. The sides of a triangle are 6, 8, and 12. What type of triangle is it? Joseph, what do we do? Um, so I did it with I, uh, it's a square plus 8 square equals 12 square. How did you know 12 was going to be our C? Because it's the biggest. Because it's the biggest one. So what's 6 squared? Uh, 36. 8 squared? Uh, 64. And 12 squared? Uh, 144. So 36 plus 64 is? 100. Is 100 greater than, less than, or equal to 144? Less than. 100 is less than. So that means our C squared is bigger. So what type of triangle is this going to be? Obtuse. Obtuse. <laughs> The hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle is 28. What is the length of one of the legs? What are we going to do first? Draw it out. So the hypotenuse is 28, and we know it's an isosceles right triangle. So what can we say the legs are going to be? X and X. They're the same thing, so we can call this X and X. So if this is if this is an isosceles triangle, what makes the, what would that mean the angles are going to be? The same. So, Jake, what would the angles be? Forty-five and forty-five. So this is a forty-five, forty-five, ninety triangle. So if it gives us our hypotenuse and we have to go backwards and find the x, what do we need to do? Divide by square root 2. So we have 28 divided by square root 2. Can we leave our answer like this? What do we need to do to simplify this? We multiply the top and bottom by square root 2. So we multiply straight across. And we get 28 root 2 on the top. And what do we get on the bottom? What's square root 2 times square root 2? Square root 4. Square root 4, which is just 2. So can we simplify this more? Yeah, 14 square root 2. 14 square root 2. Also, it's 45, 45 because it's an isosceles. Yes. It's an isosceles right triangle. Yes. Some of them won't give you the triangle, so you'll have to draw it out. All right, let's do number four. The longest side of a 30, 60, 90 triangle measures 12. What is the length of the shorter leg? What do we do first? Draw it out. Draw it out. What is the longest side of our... The hypotenuse. So our hypotenuse is going to be 12. So let's say this is 30 and this is 60. It's asking us for the length of the shorter leg, so we need to find the one across from 30. So how do we go backwards the length of the leg across from 30? We divide by 2. So we do 12 divided by 2, and what is the length of our shorter leg? 6. So x equals 6? x is equal to 6. Let's 
Let's look at five. The sides of a triangle are five, 10, and 11. What type of triangle is it? What equation do we set up? Allie. Um, you reduce 25 plus 100 equals 125 plus 100 is equal to 121. So we do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. How did we know 11 was going to be our c squared? Because it's the biggest. So we have 125. Is it greater than, less than, or equal to 121? So since our c squared is smaller, it is an acute triangle. Any questions on this page? Ready for the next one? Okay, let's look at number six. What is the value of x? Allie. So remember in a 45, 45, 90 oh, triangle, we multiply by square root two. So what do we get for x? 10 square root 2. Julia, what do we do for 7? We times it by 2, so what do we get for x? Perfect. Because it starts with the 1 across from 30, so it's our starting point is 8. And now to go find the hypotenuse, we have to multiply by 2. Uh, suppose that, like, both sides have 8. So do you just have to use one of those numbers and just multiply by 2? Well, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, they're not, both sides aren't going to have 8. Because remember, the one across from 60 is going to be this times square root 3. So this will be 8 times square root 3. Okay. Look at number eight. What is the value of x? So it gives us our hypotenuse, and we have to go backwards and find the length of the leg. Oh, eight. Oh, eight. Sorry, sixteen square root two. We have to go backwards. So what do we need to do? Divide. So we do sixteen divided by square root two. Can we leave our answer like this? No. No. What do we need to do? So we multiply the top and bottom by square root 2. And we get 16 square root 2 on the top. And what do we get on the bottom? 2. two. And can this sim be simplified anymore? Yes. Yes. 8 square root 2. So if it gives us the hypotenuse, we have to go backwards and divide by square root 2 in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh -huh. If it gave us x and we had to find the hypotenuse, we would multiply. Let's look at number 9. What is the value of x? So we're looking for the one across from 30. What do we need to do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So what do we get for x? 10. 10. What if it asks us for the value of y also? It would be 10 square root 3. We would just take our x and multiply it by square root 3. And that would be the answer. And that would be our answer. <coughs> In this one, if you're looking for y, it would be 10 times square root 3. Ms. Carver, so you can't like simplify it? Nope. No? Okay. If we simplified what's under the radical here, do we have any pair? Can we break down 3 anymore? No. no. Okay. 6. All right, let's look at number 10. Compare A, B, and C, D. Okay. 
Ryan, how do we compare A, B, and C, D for number 10? A, B is bigger than C, D. So A, B is greater than C, D. Good job. Number 11, find the value of X. What do we need to do? Anthony. Uh huh. Um, did you say seven because it's equal to x? Uh, square root three. So if it gives us two sides of the triangle and we have to find the third, what equation do we use? It's x. X squared two. We don't know if this is a special right triangle, so it's just any type of right triangle. So how do we find the third side? Julia, you want to help them out? No. It's equal to seven, right? Joseph. Is it x squared plus seven squared? X squared plus seven squared is equal to? Thirteen squared. Thirteen squared. We do the Pythagorean theorem. So we have x squared plus what's 7 squared? 49. And what's 13 squared? 169. So we subtract 49 from both sides. So we get x squared is equal to? 120. What do we do next? We simplify it. So take the square root on both sides. So we get x is equal to the square root of 120. Can the square root of 120 be simplified? Yes. What can we break it down into? 3 square root of 3. 6 square root of 3. Oh, sorry, 60 and 2. 60 and 2. We could do 12 and 10. That would work too. So what can we break 60 down into? 30 and 2. And what can we break 30 into? 15 and 2. And what can we break 15 into? 30 and 2. So do we have any pairs? Yeah. We have a pair of 2's that we can take out. So we're just taking out 1, 2, and what gets stuck in our radical? 2 times 3 times 5. 2 times 3 times 5. So we have 2 square root 30. That's our final answer. Okay, let's look at number 12. Find the value of x. Anthony, what are we going to do for this one? Um, um, 8 squared plus 9 squared equals x squared. Perfect. So what's 8 squared? And what's 9 squared? It's equal to x squared. What's 64 plus 81? 145 is equal to x squared. What do we do next? Take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Can we simplify 145? No. So what's our answer? X is equal to the square root of 145. Okay, true or false? A right triangle has sides that measure 3, 5, and 4. The side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. I put true. Why is it true? I just like organize like to, you know, like, you know, smallest to largest. I put 3, then 4, then 5. And then afterwards, I put like, you know, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And then, you know, I put 9 plus 16, and then it equals 25, and then I just um, add 16 plus 9, and then I got 25. Perfect. So not only are they whole numbers, 
That makes them a Pythagorean triple, but we also need them to work as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So those two things make this true. Any questions on anything from this page? Ready for the next page? Oops. True or false, so right triangle has sides that measure eight, three, and nine. The side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. True or false? False. How did you know it's false? Because when you do 8 squared plus 3 squared is equal to 9 squared, they're not equal. So that's what makes it false. Fifteen. The sides of a triangle are three, eight, and six. What type of triangle is it? Allie, what do we need to do first? Um, so I need to put the smallest ones first. Thirty-six plus sixty-four equals one sixty-nine, which is thirteen squared. Um, How did we know thirteen squared was going to be our C? The biggest one. Because it's the biggest one. And then thirty-six plus sixty-four is one hundred. That's less than one sixty-nine. So we have 36 plus 64 is equal to 169, and 36 plus 64 is what? 100. So 100 is less than 169, but since our c squared is bigger, obtuse. it's obtuse. Right, 16, find the value of x. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so we have a special right triangle. What do we do to find x? 6 over square root 2. 6 over square root 2. So this one we're going forward, so we need to multiply. 6 over square root 2. 6 square root 2. That's it? Uh-huh. Because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yes, the hypotenuse, you take the leg and multiply it by square root 2 to find you, the hypotenuse. You don't have to go backwards because you already have your x. Or right. Y or if it gave you the hypotenuse and was asking you for the leg, that was when you divide. Uh -huh. But since we're finding the hypotenuse, we need to multiply. Another way we can do this problem, if you forget your special right triangles, we can do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So what's our a? Six. And what's our b? Thirty-six. Oh, and what's our c? Nine. So we have 36 plus 36 is equal to x squared. 36 plus 36 is? 72. So then we take the square root of both sides. Now we have to find square root 72 in simplest form. So we can take out a 36 and a 2. And 36 is a perfect square of 6 and 6. So we have 6 square root 2. So that's another way to do this one. But it was also a lot less work just to know our special right triangles. What do you mean? I don't know if you got it. Like, how about when you do the square root of 3? What, when would you do that? That's in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we, this, you multiply by square root 3 when you're trying to find what's across from 60. So we have two different 
types of special triangles of 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90. Here's an example of a 30, 60, 90. So find the value of x and y. So it gave us the one across from 30. So let's find x. What do we need to do to find the hypotenuse? Multiply by 2. So what's x? And then how do we find y? If it gave us what's across from 30, it gave us... 8 square root 3. Perfect. Not 16, right? Not 16 uh, square root 3, right? Right. X is just 16. So you square root 3 for y. Yes. So 18 says one leg of a 45-45-90 triangle is 8 square root 2. What is the hypotenuse? What should we do first? Draw it. So we have a 45-45-90 triangle. And one leg is 8 square root 2. So how do we know which is going to be 8 square root 2? The legs are, the, both the legs are going to be, because it says one leg, so if it's a leg, it's not the hypotenuse. So now I need to find. Number 19, find the range of values for x. What do we do first? How do we set this up, Kevin? Um, 6x minus 4 is less than 32. 6x minus 4 is less than 32. Isn't How did? Isn't it greater than 12? Remember, 6x what? minus 4 is across from 12, and 32 is across from 10. So since 12 is bigger, we need this sign in the middle to be greater than. So now how do we solve for x? Add 4 on both sides. So we have 6x is greater than 36. What should we do next? So we have x is greater than 6. So look at number 20. Find the value of x. What do we need to do for this one? Multiply by x minus 2 squared. x minus 2 squared. Plus 14 squared. Plus 14 squared. is equal to c squared, which is our x squared. So how do we do x minus 2 squared? What do we need to do? FOIL. So we have x minus 2 times x minus 2. So we do the first. We get x squared. Then the outsides, minus 2x. Insides, minus 2x, plus 4. 
So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus, what's 14 squared? 196. 196 is equal to x squared. What can we do next? <coughs> Subtract the square root, the x squareds on both sides. So we have minus 4x. What does this become? 4 plus becomes 200 is equal to, these two cancel out, so zero. What do we do next? Add the 4x. Add the 4x. So we have 200 is equal to 4x. Divide by 4. And x is equal to? 50. There will be a question on the test that you have to FOIL. Are there many or no? Just one. Okay. All right, 21. What is the range of values for x? Allie. Um, 2x is less. 2x is... Greater than 30. Then what do we do to solve for x? Divide by 2. So x is greater than? 15. 15. On the test, you need to include a greater than or less than sign for these questions, okay? A lot of people on the quiz just put x is equal to 15. That is not right. X is greater than 15. I got 15 is less than X. So we have 30 is across from 21, and 2X is across from 25. Yeah, Oh, yeah. You can write it the other way. So if you write 15 is less than X, that's the same thing. Okay, 22. How can we simplify square root of 68? 2 and 34. Can we simplify 34? 2 times 17. And can we simplify 17? No. No. Do we have any pairs? No. We have a pair of twos. So we're going to take out one, two. We already have a three on the outside. So what are we doing to the two? And So we take 2 and multiply it by 3. And then what's on the inside? 17. So what do we get on the outside now? 6 square root 17. Remember, if it has a variable in the front, we need to multiply whatever we take out with that variable. So you don't need to multiply like 2 and 17 because you already used 2 and 17? We took out both the 2s. No, I mean I got it right. Okay, any questions on this page? Let's go to the next one. This is a lot more than So we have 2 square root 108. Can we break down 108? Okay, wait. <laughs> what can we do? 9 and 12. 9 and 12. So 9, we have a pair of what? 3 and 3. And 12, we have what? 3 and 4. Or 2 and 6. 3 and 4. So we have 3 times 3 times 3. Can we break down 4? 2 and 2. 2 and 2. So we have a pair of 3s and a pair of 2s. So we're going to take out the 3s. Remember, we have this 2 already on the outside. And then we take out the pair of 2. And what are we left with on the inside? Three. Just three. So what do we get on the outside now? 
12. Square root 3. Square root 3. <laughs> Bless you. We needed to see if we had any more pairs. Because if you would have just left this, like if we stopped here and found that we So let's look at 24. What can we do first? Two and twenty-three. Can twenty-three be broken down more? No. No. Do we have any pairs? No. So what's our answer? Negative four square root forty-six. Right, 25. What can we take out of square root 338? <laughs> so what can we break 169 into? So what do we have pairs of? 13. And what do we do with that? So what do we get on the outside? 13. And what are we left with on the inside? So 13 square root 2. Okay, and last question. Yay. Can we break down... 149. 47, yeah. 147. Three, three, seven and 21. 7 and 21. Can we break down 21? Yep. 7 and 3. 7 and 3. So what pairs do we have? Seven. And what do we do with our pair? Take it out. Take it out. So what do we get on the outside? 7 square root 3. 7 square root 3. And it gives us one of the legs. So let's say our leg was five. Uh, let's do four. So our leg was four. How do we find the hypotenuse? Multiply by what? By root, square root two. So the hypotenuse is gonna be four square root two. If we have a triangle that was a 45, 45, 90, and it gave us the hypotenuse as five square root two. How do we go backwards and find one of the legs? We divide. So we would do five square root two divided by square root two. And what do we get? Five, these just cancel out. So this would be five. We'll do an example of that next. So in a 45, 45, 90, to find the hypotenuse, you have to multiply by square root two. To find the leg, you're dividing by square root two. So the only thing that's being multiplied or divided in a 45, 45, 90 is square root two. Let's do an example of a 30, 60, 90. So let's say it gives us the side across from 30, the leg across from 30 as 6. How do we find our hypotenuse? We multiply by 2. So in a 30, 60, 90, to find the hypotenuse, we're multiplying by 2. So it's 6 times 2. 
12. Now to find the one across from 60, what do we need to do? 6 square root 3. So always think of it as the one across from 30 is our starting point. This is where we start. So the one across from 30 will always multiply by 3? Or always? If we need to find the hypotenuse, we're going to multiply by 2. If we need to find the one across from 60, we multiply by square root 3. Now if we need to go backwards, if it doesn't give us the one across from 30 to start. So let's say we have a 30, 60, 90, and it gives us 6 is our hypotenuse, and we need to find the one across from 30. What do we do? Now we divide by 2. So we do 6 divided by 2, which would be 3. If we're finding the one across from 30. So we started with the hypotenuse, and now we needed to go backwards and find the one across from 30. Can you do one more of 45, 45 with um, the hypotenuse mm -hmm. How would we find the y here, the one across from 60? Well, now that we found what x is, we found the one across from 30. We times square root 3, so it would be 3 square root 3. <coughs> For the one before, we multiplied. So when we start with the one across from 30, and we go either to find the hypotenuse or the other leg, we're multiplying. When starting with this one, you always multiply. But if we start with another, we're going to have to divide first, and then we multiply. Okay, let's do another example of a 45, 45, 90. So let's say our hypotenuse is 8. How do we go backwards and find the leg? Divide by square root 2. We divide by square root 2. Remember, in a 45, 45, 90, you're always going to be either multiplying or dividing by square root 2. So now we're dividing by square root 2, but we need to simplify this more. Because we can't leave our square root 2 on the bottom. So how do we simplify this? Two. Well, what do we do? Square root 2 over square root 2 times it by square root 2. So we multiply the top and bottom by square root 2 over square root 2. So we get 8 square root 2 on the top. And what do we get on the bottom? And now, how do we simplify this? Four square root two. Four square root two. So remember, whole numbers can divide by whole numbers. And whole numbers can multiply whole numbers, but they can't touch the square root. And then can you do one where the hypotenuse is like a number with a square root two? Yes. But 45, 45. Yep. So let's do another 45, 45, 90. It's the worst triangle. Okay. And our hypotenuse is 10 square root 2. How do we find the legs? We divide by square root 2. We divide square root 2. So we have 10 square root 2 divided by square root 2. And how do we simplify this? It's just 10 because the square root 2s cancel out. So we just get 10. So our legs here would be 10 and 10. And then what if one of the legs was 10 square root 2 and the hypotenuse was x to that way? Okay, let's do one like that. So we have a 45, 45, 90. And our leg was 10 square root 2, and we have to find our hypotenuse x. So to find the hypotenuse, what do we need to do? times it by square root 2. So we have 10 square root 2 times square root 2. Yes, so we get 10 times 2, which is equal to 20.